Hello students, today's video is about water for all. Here I will discuss about the sources of water, the reasons for the depletion of ground water, the conservation and management of water where you will learn about some of the ancient techniques of water harvesting and thereafter you will learn about dams and problem associated with building of large dams and finally you will study about the various needs of water harvesting techniques. So let us start with water for all. Water, it is a basic necessity of all terrestrial forms of life. Some parts of our country have good resources of water, whereas other parts suffer from chronic water shortage. The two conditions can be drawn from this. That is the region with good availability of water are flourishing because they have good crops and the regions with shortage of water are in the thick of poverty because of the poor crops. So here we will learn about the various sources of water available to us. They are the rivers, lakes, ponds and wells. All this water finally comes from the rainwater. Snow clad mountains are another source of water to us that provide water to the rivers. But in the present condition, we see that the groundwater is depleting day by day. Now, what are the causes of the depletion of groundwater? They are due to lack of sufficient vegetation cover, only a little rainwater seeps into the ground. Secondly, the diversion of high yielding variety which needs more water for irrigation. Thirdly, discharge of untreated urban sewage and industrial waste into the river and lakes that reduces the availability of usable water. Fourthly, the change in the lifestyle of people that has resulted in consuming more water. And finally, the pressure of increasing population for water. As conservation and management of water is very, very important to meet the demand of the water to the people because without water, life is impossible. So how can we do it? We can adopt some interventions. What are they? They are by building up dams, tanks and canals for irrigation by strictly regulating the use of stored water. Now previously, the total maintenance and irrigation system was in the hand of local people and they managed the cropping pattern that was based on the water availability for decades and centuries. Here you need to learn about the effects of the British rule on water management. When the British came, they changed the whole system of the water harvesting. They totally neglected the local dams and canals. Instead, they built up large dams and storage of huge quantity of water and canals transversing long distances. Now, this same process was also followed by the Indian government after independence. So, this changed the scenario in two ways. First is the mega projects neglected the local water storage and irrigation system. Secondly, the government took over the control of the old system. So, the local people lost the control over the local system, resulting in haphazard distribution of water. Now, we will learn one very important water harvesting system of Himachal Pradesh known as Kuls. These are the local irrigation canals developed by the people of Himachal Pradesh about 400 years ago. The part of water flowing in stream diverted to man-made canals which took this water to numerous villages down the hillside. The water flow in Kuls was managed by two or three people who were paid by the villagers. Now, during planting season, water was first supplied to the village farthest away from the source of the Kuls. Then by villagers progressively higher up. These Kuls benefited the local people in following ways. They are Water was distributed among the villages amicably. The problem of irrigation was never faced by local people and water percolated into the soil and also fed springs at various points. Now, once these schools were taken over by the irrigation department, most of them became defunctional. Also, there was no proper sharing of water as before. From this, you can understand how this local system of water harvesting were very important. Now, we will learn about the dams. 
Now dams are large water storing bodies built by the government across the rivers. They store enormous amount of water during the rainy season. Various Indian rivers like Ganga, Bambaputra, Krishna, Kaveri, Godavari, Satlaj and Narmada has dams constructed on them. They store the water in the rainy season and this stored water is used to generate electricity by running turbines. They provide water over long distances for irrigation. They supply water for domestic use and municipal purposes. Now, some of the famous dams across the rivers are Bhakra Dam across river Satlaj in Himachal Pradesh and Punjab. The Tehri Dam on river Ganga in Tehri Garhwal in Uttarakhand. The Methur Dam on the river Kaveri in Tamil Nadu. The Sardar Sarovar Dam built on river Narmada in Gujarat. And the Tawa Dam is a large reservoir on Tawa River located in Hosangabad that is in Madhya Pradesh. What are the problems that are associated with building of large dams? They are the social problem, economic problem and environmental problem. So what are these problems actually? Social problem is a large number of peasants and tribals are displaced without adequate compensation and rehabilitation. The outsides of Tawa Dam built in 1970 have not yet received the help and promised compensation. The economic problem includes the large dam require a large amount of money for implementation. Sometimes this project do not generate proportionate benefits. An environmental problem are a vast variety of plant and animals get submerged in the water of the large reservoirs formed by the high rise dams. This results in deforestation and loss of biodiversity canal system. Canal system leading from the dams carry large amount of water to great distances for irrigation and domestic use. For example, Indira Gandhi canal that has brought greenery to the deserts area of Rajasthan like Jaisalmer and Barmar. All along the way providing drinking water to thousands of people and irrigation facilities for growing crop. However, mismanagement of water resources has led to various problems like a system of equitable distribution of water was not evolved. Farmers close to the system grew water intensive crop like sugarcane and rice resulting in water logging. Farmers farther down the streams do not get enough water to grow even drought tolerant crops. So in the recent times the environmentalists have opposed the construction of large dams like Tehri Dam on river Ganga and Sardar Sarovar project in Gujarat. The Narmada Bachao Andalan protested against raising of the height of the Sardar Sarovar Dam. Next topic is water harvesting. Water harvesting can be defined as the direct collection of rain water for direct use or recharging it into the ground water for indirect use. Now there are various benefits of water harvesting. They are the water become available around the year for drinking and irrigation reduces community dependence on wa groundwater for domestic use, it reduces the chances of flood during rainy season and it recharges the groundwater. Now here I want to discuss about some of the traditional water harvesting system discussed in your book. These are the Khadin, Tank Irrigation and Nadis. These are found in Rajasthan. Pond Irrigation is found in Jammu Kashmir. Kuls is found in Himachal Pradesh that I have discussed just now. Bundis in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. Ahars and Pines in Bihar. Bandara and Tal in Maharashtra. Aries that is tank irrigation in Tamil Nadu. Surangams in Kerala and Kattas in Karnataka. So dear students, today's topic is this much. In the next video, I will be discussing about the traditional water harvesting system that is Khadin and another modern water harvesting system that is rooftop water harvesting system. So stay tuned with me for the next video. Till then, bye.